Oh, what would you like for Christmas, Biggums? A beer. <laughs> oh, no problem, Biggums. Just grab this wisp. Hover! Anyway, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Honest Opinion. Tonight we're going to be keeping up with the tradition of reviewing a Sonic game for Christmas, and tonight I chose Sonic Colors, my gift to you all. Anyway, without further ado, is this game any good, and is it something I could recommend to you? Let's find out. Sonic Colors is a 3D platforming adventure game released back in 2010. This was one of the few Sonic games that I had yet to play, and had it not been requested in the past, I probably never would have played it. And that's because this was a Nintendo Wii exclusive. I did play the one on DS back in the day, and I recall having fun with it, but I never thought to pick up the console version. So, thanks to you guys, I now have a reason to not only look at this game, but also review a Wii game for the first time. Everybody wins! Anyway, I was never all that interested in playing this game in the first place. Sonic Unleashed didn't exactly leave a lasting impression on me, so I wasn't all too curious about this game as a result. Little did I know though that Sonic Colors was a commercial success in comparison to the games before it. As of now, Sonic Colors has sold almost 3 million units worldwide. Considering the rough patches that Sonic had during the 6th and 7th generation of consoles, this is very impressive. Back then, Sonic's future was looking grim, so it's definitely refreshing to see him regaining some strides here. I know, some will argue that Sonic Unleashed is the best of the boost games, and admittedly my opinion of the game has shifted a bit since I posted my review of it, but I have to disagree that Unleashed is the best of them. Certainly not the worst either, as that dishonor goes to Sonic Forces, hands down. The story of Sonic Colors goes like this. Dr. Eggman opens an amusement park in space called Dr. Eggman's Incredible Interstellar Amusement Park. Say that five times fast. He claims to be turning over a new leaf and making up for his past transgressions. The park is made up of several planet-sized attractions. Suspicious, Sonic and Tails investigate. They meet Yakker, who comes from a species of aliens known as Wisps. After Tails invents a translator to communicate with them, they learn that the other Wisps have been enslaved by Eggman, who plans to harness their energy for a mind control laser that will allow them to take over the Earth. Sonic proceeds to visit the planets, liberating the Whisks and shutting down the generators linked to the amusement park. As Sonic frees the Whisks, Eggman tries to fire the cannon at the world, but a piece of wreckage causes it to malfunction. As the amusement park begins to explode, Sonic confronts Eggman, who uses the Nega Whisk to power his final contraption, a robot that uses all of the power of the Whisks that Sonic has met before against him. As the machine gets weaker, the Whisks escape and help Sonic defeat Eggman, sending him hurling off into space. The Whisks carry Sonic out of the exploding amusement park. Returning safely to Earth, Yakker thanks Sonic and Tails and flies away. However, if you're playing the DS version, Sonic and Tails soon learn that the leading Mother Wisp has been infected by the negative energy and transformed into Nega Mother Wisp. Using the power of the Chaos Emerald, Sonic transforms into Super Sonic and fights her. Following her defeat, the Mother Wisp returns to normal and the Wisp part ways with the two heroes. In the post credit scene, Eggman is seen stranded in space with his henchmen Orbot and Cubot. Gotta say, I enjoyed the story. While not as entertaining as other games in the series, I found the plot of Colors to be enjoyable and pretty much what I look for in a Sonic game. Cheesy and lighthearted humor with a little touch of edge. Unfortunately, the main issue I have here is that the story is just way too short. I, I don't know why, but it seems like all of the Boost games have incredibly short stories. In fact, the only exception that I can think of is Unleashed. Like, no joke, you can beat Colors, Generations, and Forces in the same day. That's how short they are. Aside from that though, I like the story of colors, though Sonic's puns are pretty cringy. I'm a race of beings called Wisps. Wisps? No, Wisps, with a W. Bravo, Sonic. Bravo. 
The gameplay works pretty much the same way it did in the other games, although Forces is probably the closest comparison. You control a Sonic from beginning to end, and the goal of each level is traditional, which is perfectly fine in my book. There isn't a whole lot to say here, so what I think I'll do is I'll address this game's gimmick. The wi- Why is that so hard to say? and go over each one individually. Now currently after the release of Lost World on the Wii U and the handheld games such as Colors DS and Lost World 3DS, we have 16 different whips in total. Luckily this game only has 8 of them. The white whips are probably the most common ones to find, but they're also the ones without a special ability. Finding these little guys simply charge up Sonic's boost meter, unlike an Unleashed where rings charge it. White whips can be found inside enemies and inside capsules scattered throughout the level, so it's really not hard to keep the boost gauge filled at least somewhat. From here, every other whisk in the game has a special perk and must be used properly to achieve the best possible scores in the game. The Yellow Wisp grants Sonic the ability to drill underground. You use this to find hidden goodies, shortcuts, and more. I don't know why, but I feel like the Yellow Wisp was much easier to control here than in Lost World. Does anyone else feel this way, or am I just the asshole here? The Cyan Wisp is known as the Laser Wisp. Using this allows Sonic to essentially perform the light speed attack. You aim the laser any which way you want and watch Sonic go, but with good precision, you can skip very big chunks of the level. I'm gonna refer back to Lost World again, but I think the Laser Wisp is much better here and has a lot more practical use. Not to mention, I love the announcer's voice when he says it. The Blue Wisp is the Cube Wisp. It's stupid and probably the most situational wisp of them all. All it does is change certain cubed platforms into giant blue rings that give you absolutely nothing. Additionally, it changes those same blue rings into solid cube platforms allowing you to walk on them. So basically, it's worse than the P-Switch in Super Mario. I know what they were trying to go for here, but this seriously just feels like a copyright infringement lawsuit waiting to happen. No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! Yeah, yeah, that's right, Nintendo. Yeah, no copyright law will stop me. <laughs> it can also destroy enemies within a certain proximity, so I guess you could say this is also a bit of a screen nuke as well. Altogether, the Blue Wisp was definitely my least favorite. It just doesn't feel like a power-up unlike the other Wisps. The Green Wisp is a pretty close second for me, but I like it just a little bit more. This one is known as the Hover Wisp, which grants Sonic the ability to slowly hover until the power-up runs out. It can kill enemies on contact and allow you to perform the light speed dash, so it's got the practical use of the Cyan Wisp, but the situational use like the blue one. Kind of underwhelming in my opinion, especially considering that Sonic was always able to perform the light speed dash naturally. The Pink Wisp is the Spike Wisp. This turns Sonic into a pink ball and allows him to tread on 90 degree walls and ceilings. I like this Wisp, but I do find it kind of odd that the only way Sonic can spin dash is to use this Wisp. But I guess in the end, it's not the end of the world. I wouldn't say that this Wisp is too situational, as there are plenty of level segments where traversing the stage using the ceiling could be a lot of fun. Next up is the Purple Wisp, also known as Frenzy. This Wisp turns Sonic into some kind of creature that'll eat anything in its path. It's honestly kind of weird and a little awkward to control, but if you want to rack up those points quickly, then the Frenzy Wisp has you covered. Don't really have a whole lot to say about this other than I like it. Since it can destroy literally anything, this is one of the more useful power-ups in my opinion. I imagine that once you master the controls for it, it can be a great asset to speedrunners as well. Finally, we have the Orange Wisp, granting Sonic the ability of Rocket. All it does is shoot Sonic straight up into the air. I wouldn't say that this one is useless, but I really didn't find this one to be all that helpful. Of course, you'll likely need it to find certain goodies or maybe an alternate route, but I was pretty underwhelmed with this Wisp as well. Okay, that's all 8 Wispuses, so all in all, I enjoyed the gimmick. Yeah, some of the wipes were less cool than others, but I can see why people enjoy them. The levels are designed around the wipes abilities, so you have a lot of options when you reach the goal. I can only assume that mastering all these power-ups pretty much guarantees you an S rank at the end of each level. So for you Sonic Colors masters out there, feel free to let me know. While we're on the subject of levels, allow me to discuss how wonderful these stages are. Honestly, of all the boost games, I think the level design and colors is hands down the best of them. What I love about these stages is that they're not overly easy while not being too hard either. Top all that off with numerous pathways and options thanks to the wipes, and you have a nearly perfect level design here. One complaint I have though is that a lot of these stages are very short. I recall one level taking me less than two minutes to finish, and I criticize forces for this, so to be fair, I have to criticize colors for it too. Not all the levels are like this for the record. In fact, out of the 66 levels, I think about 50 of them are three minutes or less. 
And yes, you heard that number correctly. There are 66 playable stages in the game in total. So thinking about it now, I guess it kind of makes sense for some of the levels to be shorter than others. There was a lot of data packed onto this disc, which is pretty impressive for a Wii game, especially when you consider that Forces technically had 43 stages and that was on a Blu-ray disc. As far as the rest of the gameplay is concerned, it's really not that different from any other boost formula games in the series. So in that regard, if you played Generations, then you played Colors. If you played Unleashed, then you played Colors. The differences are minor, and the only notable differences are the gimmicks presented in each, such as the Werehog in Unleashed, and classic Sonic gameplay in Generations. So with this in mind, you already know that I really do enjoy the boost formula, and Colors is no exception. The controls feel nice, especially with the GameCube controller. I don't know about you guys, but I think Sonic games are best suited to this bad boy right here. Long live the GameCube! Long live the GameCube! <laughs> Jokes aside, I really did enjoy the gameplay here. Aside from a couple tiny little nitpicks, I really don't have many issues here. However, I will say that I'm not very fond of how to unlock Super Sonic. This can only be achieved by completing the Sonic Simulator games, and these levels are just more mini games where you and a friend, if applicable, can cooperatively play a stage. These are extremely easy, but the issue doesn't come from the levels themselves. What I'm talking about is how you unlock them. The only way to do this is to collect collect the red rings scattered throughout each level. There's a total of five in each level and locating them is simple enough, it's just time consuming. And time is not a luxury I have. That's what I get for being old! Anyway, once you beat all the hidden stages, you unlock Super Sonic, and he can be used to play in just about any level you want. At the time, this was a pretty big deal because Super Sonic was never playable until you reached the game's final boss. So at the time when this game came out, this was huge. But unfortunately for me, it was rather dull. By the time I unlocked him, I had already had my fill of the game, and using Super Sonic just didn't feel as rewarding as it did back in the Genesis days. I can appreciate that Sega finally listened to the fans, but... I don't know man, I think they should have just stuck with tradition at this point. Meaning, have us collect the emeralds via special stage. I mean, colors on the DS did it, so why couldn't this one? And speaking of the DS version, I'm not going to go into too much details here, but there's actually quite a number of differences. After doing some research, I found that critics tend to prefer the DS version to its Wii counterpart. What? I know, surprising, right? Usually it's the other way around, but considering the success of the Rush titles, I suppose it's not too surprising here. Anyway, the main difference between the two here are the Wikes and the fact that Super Sonic is reserved for the final boss. The story is the same, so there's not much to report here, but this game actually has special stages for you to collect the Chaos Emeralds. The drawback, though, is that you cannot use Super Sonic outside of the final boss, so it's almost like my wish was half granted. <laughs> Get out of here, Santa! Graphically, this game looks beautiful, as do most Sonic games. I dealt with some pixelated graphics, but that was likely caused by me playing this on a flat screen television. I dealt with something similar when I played Mario Sunshine, so it's really no fault to the game. Otherwise, the visuals are vibrant and well detailed. I didn't experience any glitches, the collision detection is what it should have been, and altogether the graphics are great. I expect nothing less from Sonic Team. As far as audio is concerned, I think the game did a significantly better job than the games that came before it. The music never once drowned out any of the characters' voices, which is a huge plus for me. Keep in mind guys, this was a pretty big step in the right direction at the time. The soundtrack here is great as well, I wouldn't consider this to be my favorite by a long shot, because that honor goes to Sonic Adventure 2. In conclusion, I had fun here as short as the adventure was. I think after unlocking Super Sonic, I dumped about maybe 5 hours into the game, so I can't really say that this game would have been worth $50, but I also cannot deny the craftsmanship that is Sonic Colors. Not all the wisps, hey I got it, finally! are all that fun to use, but I can appreciate the gimmick overall. This game has aged remarkably well, and considering that the game is nearly 10 years old at this point, I think a remaster is in order. I mean, I'd buy it, wouldn't you? We all know that Sonic has had his ups and downs since the series started, but hopefully we'll get a good game soon. My hopes aren't too high for Team Sonic Racing, but then again, my hopes weren't very high for Lost World either, so we'll just have to see. All in all folks, Sonic Colors to me is a really fun time, and I know, everybody and their grandma talks about how great this game is, and 
Honestly, I'm gonna be one of those people too. So with all that in mind, I definitely recommend you guys pick this game up for yourself and see what it's all about if you haven't done so already. It really is a fun game and is arguably one of the highest points in Sonic's 3D career. And that, folks, is my honest opinion. But now, I want to know what you guys think. Does Sonic Colors look like a good game to you? Have you played it? And is it something that you could recommend to a friend? Please, leave all that and more down in the comment section below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you guys will stay tuned for the Reflections video coming out here in a little bit, as well as all of my future content for 2019. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until it comes out, you all have a great night, and take care. Hey folks, I want to thank you all again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a comment or leave me a like. You know the drill. And if you're new here, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I make content all the time, and I sure do hope that you enjoy what you see. Anyway, I want to wish you guys another Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take it easy.